What is going on, Dodger fans? Holy shit. The Dodgers yep. Yep. have eliminated the San Francisco Giants from the postseason. The Los Angeles Dodgers have eliminated the San Francisco Giants from the postseason. This is going to be a full-on NLDS reaction show. We'll have the NLS preview, NLCS preview for you guys shortly. But, man, this is a series of a lifetime, historical. Your Los Angeles Dodgers have defeated the evil San Francisco Giants. David Rosenthal, I'm going to pass the torch over to you. Let's go. I am very pumped up, and I'm glad we're doing this tonight. Uh, what a game. That was extremely, extremely stressful, uh, especially when Seager struck out in the eighth, I believe. Uh, and then you had Doval coming in. But Cody fucking Bellinger, man, he just has the he just has it for the moment. He always is there at the right time. Uh, the, the pitching staff shoved, everybody shoved. I, I still don't even have a lot of words for this right now. I'm just still super, super excited. Uh, they did it. And how fitting to end on a check swing. Uh, I mean, you can't draw it up any better. Uh, you know, the Giants deserve all the credit in the world. They're a hell of a baseball team. Uh, they played well all season. Uh, but they were also pretty much the luckiest team in baseball all season. And their final moment, uh, they finally get unlucky. How about that? So I have a weird thought, and then I'm going to pass over to Jake Reiner, and he can maybe respond and then give his thoughts on this crazy series. But for whatever reason, I feel happier tonight than I did on the night that the Dodgers won the World Series. That's an not, interest. I'm not willing to go that far. Yeah, that's a that's an int- I, I I see which I see where you're going with. I see where you're going with it, Kevin. Like um, defeating defeating the Giants in the postseason is something that uh, I don't think that we ever thought we'd ever see uh, because just how rare uh, it is. But it, it definitely I, I definitely feel like excited and happy about it. I don't I don't know if I'd go that far to say that I feel happier, more jubilant jubilant now than I did when uh, Julio Urias got the last out in game six of the world series last year. But yeah, I mean, what a, what a series, what, uh, this is exactly what everybody wanted game five uh, all the way to the end. I said, Dodgers in five. Um, I was finally right with a prediction that I made. I'm so happy. Um, I'm usually wrong with every one of my predictions. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. I fucking nailed it. You know, I'm bound to get one right. Yep. So I'm glad this is the one that I got right. But just just thinking about how the season ended, the Dodgers were one game behind the Giants in the NL West. And literally, it was a Darren Ruff check swing that was the difference in the standings. And it's the reason why there was no game 163. And that's how it ends in game five. In the final game, the Dodgers win by one run. And they and the Giants had the go-ahead run at the plate. They had the tying run on base. Max Scherzer on the mound closes it out. What a crazy, crazy ending that was to that game. My other thought about this game is... Holy cow, I'm so glad that the Chris Taylor failed bunt attempt didn't come back to kill us in the next inning because I just thought that was the dumbest move that could have ever happened in that situation. I mean, just what what are you doing? Just You're telling me Chris Taylor can't hit a fly ball? You have Cody Bellinger steal second. You got second and third and one out and Chris Taylor at the plate. He's been clutch all postseason. Why are you having him drop a bunt with the infield in just made absolutely no sense, but I'm glad that that did not come back to haunt us and Scherzer was able to close it out. I think he stole second after Taylor made the out, but I, I agree with your point. Well, no, because B- I thought Bellinger was going on, uh, on the bunt. Was he oh, not? Okay. He might've been, but yeah. That, yeah. But man, Lamont on a scale of one to 10, when Lamont Wade stepped up to the plate with a man on first with a chance to walk it off, on a scale of one to 10 of my panic level was at a 98. Like I, the second he stepped in the box, I was like, Oh, this is, this is exactly how our season would end. Lamont right. Wade, late yeah. night, Lamont Wade. Of course. Uh, and that foul ball, that foul ball, he missed a home run by about a couple inches on his swing. If he, if he had gotten, uh, if he, he just got a little too ahead of that pitch and that's a home run, maybe into the cove ending the Dodgers season. So and there shouldn't, uh, there should not have been a runner on first. 
we're going to forget about it in the long run, but yeah, Justin, Justin Turner, Turner botched a routine ground ball that was super so, and that really could have tied the game or screwed our season. But he did get hit by the pitch to score the winning run. <laughs> well, and I want to say something about that because in order to beat the Giants, what we all talked about and what I was harping on at the beginning of the series was they needed to play airtight defense, and they pretty much did throughout the entire series. So – to, for it to come down to that and Justin Turner botch a routine play like that was just perfect. Uh, and I'm just so glad that it didn't open the door to disaster, which it could have yeah. and almost did. So yeah, the Dodgers played great defense. The Giants played great defense. It was an amazing series It's which, with some amazing storylines too. I mean, you got the win in game three, just making all sorts of shit happen yeah. on the field. Ridiculous. Just insane. Uh, Julio Arias coming out of the bullpen once again, just an immaculate job, even though he gave up one run. Just great job coming out of the pen. Just a whole bunch of stuff that we could talk about. Yeah. The G- Dodgers pitchers held the Giants to averaging two runs a game in that series. Yeah, and I have some stats as well. The Giants with runners in scoring position batted 120 for this series. Um, And in the seventh inning or later, usually when the Giants came back throughout the season, especially against shitty teams like the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, and then you had Lamont Wade, of course, in that one of those situations. Seventh inning or later, the Giants hit 104 as a team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's absolute no fly zone from our pitchers this entire series. I brought this up in when we were doing the the Twitter space earlier before yes. the game, but I want to I want to think I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. I think that this is the greatest Dodgers bullpen I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely, hundred yep, percent. And that's why I was on board with the opener when it was initially announced because. It actually came through because Darren Ruff did hit a home run off Urias his second time around. And I would not want to see Urias facing Darren Ruff, Buster Posey a third time through. That would have been probably disaster for the Dodgers. I felt good about Knable opening. I feel like once we kind of realized, yeah, he had success during the regular season, it made sense. And then I love that they went to Bruce Dargraderall right after him. It set up Urias to go innings three through six. And then, of course, Blake Trinan closed the door on the seventh. Kenley Jansen, who I have to give some love to in a second, yeah. took it down in the eighth. And then, of course, Max Scherzer in the ninth. Um, I don't want to. But let me but let me ask you guys something. Would you have gone Kelly seven, trying in eight, then Jansen in the ninth to close it out? I mean, I know Scherzer, it's it's great. And, and Dave Roberts loves the the moment. And he yeah, loves he giving guys that moment, right, uh, that they've never had in their careers and giving them the glory. But in terms of strategy, it looked like we even said, like, it looked like we kind of wasted trying in at the bottom for the bottom yeah. of that order. He, he managed that game. Like it was going to be nine innings only. That's what he did. Uh, right. I can't say what I would have done in that situation at the time. It, I didn't love the Arias hook. I didn't because I, I was open to the idea of extra wow. innings occurring where it seems like Dave Roberts was like, no, we're going to end this in nine. Uh, and it, it worked out. I mean, credit to Kenley Jansen, got the top of their order, uh, struck out Posey in the biggest at bat of the game up to that point. Uh, I mean, hey, it worked out. Had that gone to extra innings, the Dodgers might be in a little bit of trouble uh, in terms of who they're going to put on the mound. Yeah. So to answer your question, Jake, um, yes, I would have actually gone Kelly, Trinan, or Trinan, yeah, Jansen, because Jansen actually did have to face Buster Posey in like the toughest bats in the lineup. But this is where Kenley Jansen deserves his love in a second. I actually, on the other hand, love the pull of Urias because I believe it was Wilmer Flores and Longoria who were the batters in that seventh inning. And those guys just crushed lefties. And I kind of felt like they were starting to kind of get a grasp of what Urias was throwing. His slurve was a little off. Meanwhile, they were kind of sitting on the fastball. But Kenley Jansen didn't give up a run. And he picked up two wins in this series. He was flat out dominant. Kenley was was lights out. I mean, what what a job he did. What a job Trinan did. I've yeah. actually never felt more confident and comfortable turning it over to the bullpen in my entire life as a Dodgers fan. I, yeah, I'm right there with you. Even no, I mean this team. Year. This since we've been fans, I don't think the Dodgers have ever had more than one automatic out guy. 
Yep. Uh, and you could make an argument at this point in the season, they had, they got four. Yeah. I mean, 2017 was probably the closest, the closest second, I would say, to this, to this bullpen. Yeah. Uh, with, with Brandon Morrow, Morrow. Kenta Maeda, um, and that bunch. But this is this is far and away so much and, better. And twenty twenty, of course. Well, yes. even twenty twenty well, though, because yeah. Kenley Jansen wasn't quite there. It was yeah. it was Trinan, and then you know some question marks. We had Trinan coming in in the fourth inning in a couple of these yeah, games. Yeah, but I mean that's that's kind of my point. Is like Flora was able to knock it down, nail it down. Gratterall was pretty good in comparison, maybe to this regular season. They had a number of guys. So and Alex they did too, but. But yes, ultimately, this is probably the best bullpen they've ever assembled. And I think something else we have to talk about is Gavin Lux yes, making sir. an impact these last two games. AJ Pollock, oh man, he had a great regular season, but playoff Pollock seems to be a thing. They had to bench him the last two games. He just was no match for these Giants. But Gavin Lux, I don't have the stats off the top of my head what he did in this series. But I know for a fact he had a key base hit. And I, it's funny enough, last night he texted Cody Bellinger. I love the confidence. He texted him a gif of a Kobe to Shaquille O'Neal alley oop and said, That's going to be you and me tomorrow. Hell yeah. That's awesome. No, I mean, he and set the table. He set the table. He's a spark plug. And played pretty good defense in center that game, too. A lot of question yes. marks surrounding that. And he held his own out there. Tough he outfield looked to play. He looked confident too, and 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 I and I I believe him now because he said that he that he reads the ball off the bat better playing up the middle in center field, yeah. and I believe him because he he was very confident on his routes tonight. And even his outs, he struck out twice in his first two at bats, but he worked both counts full, uh, and helped drive up the pitch count to get Webb out of that game. Yeah, they had their yeah. they had their shot at Tyler Rogers, and that they don't have that uh, if they don't get those at bats from Lux and Smith who worked the count full. Yeah. So man, there's still a lot to talk about in so little time, but Mookie bets should be on the agenda. Uh, Mookie. That's, that's coming up. I still wanted to talk about other lineup adjustments that Dave Roberts made because I was feeling pretty bad after game one, but Dave Roberts, I feel like rejuvenated me and probably a lot of other Dodger fans with his in lineup adjustments. I mean, Chris Taylor was on the bench in game one after being the wild card walk-off hero. And that was pretty surprising. And Taylor was absolutely big those next two games. He should have had a home run um, in game three with the stupid win. But I know in game two, he had the double, which set up the big rally up in San Francisco when Cody Bellinger also came through with a big two run double. So Bellinger was all over this series. He actually hit around, um, where is it? I think he batted 294, if I remember off the top of my head correctly, which is remarkable given what he batted during the regular season. But that's what I love about the postseason. It's a clean slate for every hitter. You don't have to walk up, looking up at the scoreboard, seeing what your regular season batting average is. You get a full reset. And for a guy like Cody Bellinger, this worked wonders. It's the haircut, man. Ever since. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we joke about it, but seriously, he got his haircut and it was time. It was time. And he's been great since then. I mean, you just can't count him out because Cody Bellinger is still in there. Uh, obviously, he was a shell of himself during the regular season, but he's still in there. You know, he, he's not a different person. It's still there. Uh, and credit to, to Dave Roberts for just trusting it. Uh, he put the, the at-bat quality has gotten a lot better. Dave Roberts stuck with it. Obviously, the Muncie injury makes it a little easier for him to do it, but he's still stuck with him, even though there's plenty of other options out there. Speaking of, of uh, Kobe to Shaq alley-oop, Mookie Betts to Corey Seager is yeah. a one-two punch like no other in the major leagues. And for Mookie Betts, who had an unbelievable night, not only series, but unbelievable night against a tough pitcher in Logan Webb, yeah. was able to hit him three times – and he got on base in his in his final at bat against Logan Webb was able to steal second, and that's why he was able to score on that double from Seager. Yes, exactly. And yeah, despite Corey Seager not having a great series, he was the one that tied the game up, as you just mentioned. Mookie Betts in this NLDS had a 450 batting average. Yep. So for all the haters out there, or the ones that still question 
why would the Dodgers give him a 12 year contract when they think he might be declining? Well, this is why, because in the moment, Mookie Betts is the table setter. He is your leadoff hitter. And tonight was just a proven fact of why you have to have him at the top. 100%. I mean, that's, they won the game because of Mookie Betts. I mean, you can give a lot of credit, give a lot of credit to a lot of people, but I mean, that throw in game two for Mookie Betts, the offense, as Kevin said, he hit 459 for 20, I believe, with a home run. Uh, just an electric series. If, I don't think they do NLDS MVPs, but if there was one, it would be Mookie Betts for sure. Oh, of course. Oh, hands down. <laughs> and and I, I'm just, you know, I'm really happy that the Dodgers were able to advance the NLCS for a lot of different reasons, but a couple of them is now it brings back the question of whether or not Max Muncy is going to return and in what capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it gives Trey Turner another opportunity to be better um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that was rough. I mean, it was, him, he had him, that one hit and that's it. Both Turners actually yeah. uh, just Turner really, was... really bad in this series. So I'm Justin... glad. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm really glad that they have another opportunity to reset and also AJ Pollock too, because man, it would be so tough for him to just be decent in the regular season and not in the postseason. Yeah, so Justin, Justin, go ahead. You got it, Kevin. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, so Justin Turner obviously had the wild card home run, which was very important for the Dodgers to advance. But in the NLDS, he batted like one for 20 or one for 21. It was un-Justin Turner-like in the postseason. Yeah, Trey Turner was three for 22. He had that big hit in uh, game four, but three for 22 is not going to cut it when you're hitting third in the lineup. Yeah. So the other person we didn't talk about, and he's very important for why the Dodgers won the series, is Walker Bueller having the balls to tell Dave Roberts, I want the I want to be on the mound on three days rest. Gave Roberts no hesitation. I think it was obviously the move that worked out because it would have probably been Gonsolin or a bullpen game. Yeah. And that probably would not play into the Dodgers' favor. Although they did put up a lot of runs, but still momentum is big. So Walker Bueller never had pitched on three days rest in his life in major league baseball that level. And he did great. I loved that. They pulled him at four and a third, 70 pitches or so. Cause you could tell he lost the command of his curve ball and Roberts didn't allow this inning to escalate. Like maybe we've seen in the past with Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Roberts managed this, this series really well, a few questionable calls uh, here and there, but that's to be expected. You're not going to be perfect. But in terms of lifting pitchers and inserting new pitchers, it worked out pretty much every time. Absolutely. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about with the check swing? I, I actually had a kind of a quote from Darren Ruff who addressed the situation. After yeah, I the saw game. that quote too. It was actually kind of cool. Yeah. yeah he, so he basically admitted like things came full circle and he said, you know, the, I don't remember who the ump was. David probably remembers who gave the Giants that not, or they gave him the check sweet check swing. The rough one. Yeah, the rough one. I don't remember which umpire that was. Okay. Regardless, rough basically acknowledged like that was a big reason why they won the division and handled tonight the right way. He didn't really bitch, and even the umpire tonight made a statement. He basically said it looked like a swing to me or something. And it's not now, often you hear an umpire make a statement after a game. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, oh, dude. that's the other thing I want to get on right now. So the Dodgers win in the most thrilling fashion. And what does Ron Darling do the entire time once the game ends? All yeah. he does is bitch and complain. And so, of course, we got to deal with him now in the next series. He's probably going to be all mopey. And then Ernie Johnson and after that was complaining too. They're wait, wait, wait. we got TBS again for the NLCS? Yes. Oh man, I thought we were, I thought, I it, thought was, it was Fox. Yeah, I thought it was no, Joe Buck time. That's a AO. They they wow. alternate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Sounds right. Yeah. And then Fox World Series, obviously. Correct cool me feet. if I'm wrong, but I think that is how it's gonna go. But a, yeah. But yeah, back also, to the point is just Dodgers win one of the most epic series ever, and you have the TBS announcers, and I don't want to sound like I'm crazy or something, but it just felt like they were on the giant side, especially during game five well because they wanted they they wanted that that sort of uh rags to riches type of story they wanted they wanted that that storyline of like look at these cast of misfit toys 
that are all of a sudden coming together and beating the Goliath of baseball, which is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Of course they wanted that. And Ron Darling, as we know, has never really liked the Dodgers. Him and John yeah. Smoltz. What I is mean, that? Why? What? What is that? Yeah, I've never understood it. I never think understood I, it. I think I know what Darling does. I don't know about Smoltz, but I think Darling is just bitter from 88. I don't, oh. I don't know, man. It's just look. That's also baseball. Just, also, it's the Mets. just baseball. Also, all the Mets. You, sorry, I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little excited here. Yeah. All I'm gonna say is sometimes you get the calls, sometimes you don't. And you know what? These aside from last year, every postseason run, the Dodgers have not gotten the calls. Period. It just whether it's a bounce, whether it's a check swing, whether it's a strike three call. It just hasn't gone their way. So it's nice to get one every now and again. And you know what? Before you cry, before you tell me, oh, well, well, Flores got screwed. You want to know some stats? In his career, Flores was 0 for 17 against Scherzer. I can bet your ass it was going to be 0 for 18, (laughs) even without that check swing. Down 0 and 2 in the count. He was going to go home crying in Wilmer Flores fashion regardless. Also, can can we just just say something about – because that Darren Ruff was the wasn't the Darren Ruff check swing game the same game that Sheldon Noisy didn't stretch out for yes. that throw was from it Chris, yes, from Chris it Taylor. Was. Yeah, yeah. So so Noisy's off the hook now too. Well, yeah, no, he is. He's but... not off the hook. But we're, we're going to the NLCS and the Giants are eliminated. He's off the hook. Yeah, he's not I'll, off I'll the let hook. It, I'll let it fly. He could be a DFA candidate, but worry about that when we get to the offseason. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, so, we'll worry about that noisy later. Sheldon <laughs> noisy just catching ricochet ricochet shots left and right here. So going yeah. back to what I want to get, say about Darling, a, a, <laughs> the Mets, this is why the Mets fans are the worst, and Darling is a perfect representation, is that for some reason, anyone affiliated with the Mets has to trash on the Dodgers, whether it's, oh, we're cheating, no Syndergaard, that's you, or we buy our rings, or we buy our team. That's plenty of Mets fans, but pretty pathetic out there. And um, what was I going to say also? Uh, I forget. <laughs> oh, Doug Eddings. Um, we kind of had some concerns about him going into the game. He was good. He was good for the Dodgers. There were some really atrocious calls, and I can't wait to see what the scorecard will say. I think I remember I, a particular pitch to Chris Bryant that was like way outside the zone. Oh yeah, that 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 at bat. That was uh, <laughs> he he got us two strikes in that at bat. It was Urias versus uh, versus Chris Bryant, but. <laughs> He did not give Logan Webb that outside part of the off the plate outside against righties, which he got continually in in game one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Logan he Webb, did a pretty good job tonight. I think I, I was OK with his zone pretty much the whole game. I mean, if look, if, if it's consistent, then that's all you can really ask for. Yeah. This game played out how I kind of expected it to, not to that extreme, but I was really concerned Logan Webb was going to dominate us once again. Which he kind of did. Oh, he absolutely did. did. The (laughs) the two games combined went 14 and two-thirds, allowed one run, I think 18 or 19 strikeouts. He was basically the Giants equivalent of Walker Buehler. Now, I hope that doesn't carry over to future series, but he was the one Giant that obviously stood out to me, so... Phenomenal job, even though he was busted in 2019 for using performance-enhancing drugs. But other than Buster Posey, their offense, no bats really were that impressive. Oh, Chris Bryant, he batted like 500. But other than those two, none of them really did anything. Right, and everyone loved to just praise Brandon Crawford like till the cows (laughs) come home. And it was like, oh, this guy should get MVP consideration, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, what happened in this series? (laughs) nothing dodgers pitching is what happened right he so got that one tack he, on home run in game one that's about it and he yeah. also made a nice defensive play that, well, now he has all summer to stock up on hair grease <laughs> <laughs> that game three was just the most heartbreaking game that i think i've ever watched and i think that's what made tonight as special as it was because the Dodgers had not one not two, but three of what should have been run driven in opportunities. The Mookie Betts robbery of Brandon Crawford, the Chris Taylor deep into left or right field. That was like a 920 expected batting average. And then of course, Gavin Lux with what could have been a home run off Camilo Duvall and 
we were really concerned about Duvall, but if it wasn't for the win, the Dodgers would have gotten to him both times. So he was definitely susceptible. That the kid's Dodger- going to be a hell of a pitcher, though. Let's give him credit that he is nasty. Maybe, or this will break him. And that's I don't what think so. I, I, I like the kid's stuff. I think he's got a good head on his shoulders, it seems. I, I like that kid. Maybe he's the next Nef- Neftali Feliz, where a season-defining moment like that just breaks him. Cody Bellinger yeah. is his David Freeze. Yeah. The, Do- the Dodgers, I mean, overall, the Dodgers exposed the, the Giants' bullpen. I mean, that's yeah. that's basically what happened. And... Um, the they know ne- the the Giants batters could not get to the Dodgers bullpen, and that's the difference. And the that's the difference in this series, I think. Absolutely, that's that is the difference. You hit the nail on the head. The bullpen is the X factor. When we talk about the NLCS, we're we're gonna have to dive into some situations because the Dodgers basically have three starters and then Tony Gonsolin, so that'll make things interesting in a best of seven. So let me ask you this question, since I think I ask it now every year. Do you still think the NLDS should be a best of five? Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Depends who's playing. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's pretty convenient when it's not your team or it is your team, I guess. I've always, I've always thought it should be um, seven game series for each round. So yeah. And the I wild think, and the wild card should be two out of three. I think, I think 2019 and 2021, unless you want more baseball, I guess, I think it kind of shows that game fives can be really thrilling. Oh yeah, I mean, but well, well, any elimination game can be thrilling. I mean, even the wild card game was thrilling. But I would but... not, I would not want two more games with the Giants. Let me just leave it at that. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, but it, but it, but it, yeah, you wouldn't want two more games now. But if you knew ahead of time you were having to, you were going to have to go, you know, win four games, then you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter one way or the other. I, I think what it comes down to is there needs to be some kind of reseeding for teams records and oh, stuff absolutely. like that. That's well, that's what it comes down to. The fact that the Dodgers don't have home field advantage in this round is is egregious. Yeah, yeah. it is, but I don't think it's going to matter frankly. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to take take them out back, put put their ass in oh, a fucking I'm brief. not going there because this <laughs> happened last year and we went down 3-1, so I'm going in very uh modern. <laughs> fair but enough, fair enough. Going back to this series, you know there are two other things that Maybe we talked about, but didn't really talk about is one, the Dodgers trailed this series two games to one. That's impressive in its own feet right there. Think back to 2019, they were up two games to one and they blew it. So this time they kind of flipped the script, reversed the curse, whatever you want to call it. And then they did it. And maybe the most impossible ball ballpark for Dodger for Dodgers history. And that's Oracle. They beat the giants in their home turf. Yep. I'm still I'm still in shock that it actually occurred. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't agree, know how I, agree. I, I agree. don't know how it happened. It shouldn't have happened. I mean, just with the way the Giants had it all season, it should not have ended the way it did. And I'm still in shock. It's 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 truly unbelievable. Frankly, it's like I, I, again. I mean, you said it. So, uh, Bobby Thompson had the history of being the most iconic hit in this series maybe we're going to be biased when i ask this but does cody bellinger now take that crown does he have the most iconic hit ever in this series Uh, i don't know if you can if you can really beat a a walk-off home run with a go-ahead hit i feel like part of what made that call more iconic than maybe the moment itself was the announcers as opposed to now this time the announcers really weren't as emphatic in their well call. i yes that's part of it but also the fact that the dodgers had a 13 game lead on the giants that in that 1951 season and the giants came all the way back and it was the decisive game three of that playoff that they had i think considering all of that i would still go bobby thompson fair yeah. enough i see the argument but i We'll give my answer, and I think I made it apparent now. I think the Dodgers' Cody Bellinger moment should surpass it. This was the first true postseason series. This happened in the ninth inning, arguably against their best reliever now. And given the fact that just Bellinger struggled all season, a lot of Dodgers fans had given up on him, including myself at one point. I don't think I've seen him. That that could go up there with Kirk Gibson, I guess, but not really because he won MVP that year. But this was probably the best – Zero to hero moment in one single season, maybe ever in the history of baseball. Yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, I, I'm not willing to go that far, but it's definitely up there. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's like, I don't watch, I don't have every team and every player history, like how bad their season was and how defining their moment was. I already forgot that 2018 world series MVP for the Red Sox. That he was shit all year. And Steve somehow, Pierce. Yeah. Steve Pierce. He was oh. shit all year. And then somehow I thought you were talking about Mookie. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he somehow won MVP, even though he sh- probably shouldn't have. Cause he hit like a homer off Jansen. That was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it should, it should have been Nathan Nivaldi, even though he gave up that bomb to Muncie. Yeah, maybe. I think, I feel like I had JD Martinez for some reason, but whatever that beside the point, uh, we've got a few yeah. minutes left. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Yes, there is Will Smith in the series. Oh yeah. I had that written down. six for 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, Kevin. But you uh, conveniently I, forgot it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six for 18, two doubles, two home runs. Phenomenal defense, I might add. Saved oh, a couple runs with, fan, with his yeah. picks. Uh, kind of got screwed by that umpire today who kicked the ball. Uh, but yeah. overall, amazing series for Will Smith. Worked the count well. Looked in control against pretty much every pitcher the Giants threw out there. Deserves some credit. Yeah, you, I'm glad you reminded me because that would have been tragic if I didn't mention it. This series... For me, at least, Will Smith grew up, and not the hitter part because that was already there. As a catcher, he was phenomenal. David mentioned here he, he stopped a few what could have been wild pitches. He picked some crazy ones, including that Knable curveball that was just all mm-hmm. over the place. But even as a play caller, yeah, he had a couple mistakes. But overall, he managed the bullpen perfectly. He knew what pitches to call from each guy, and that's part of the reason why this Dodgers bullpen was flat out filthy so credit to credit to where it's due and will smith caught all five games he was just excellent i now have my full faith in him behind the plate because he really was just exceptional i think he almost if not outclassed buster posey in this series he did he he absolutely did and that's a great way to put it kevin he he grew up in this series makes you feel no remorse for trading Kyber Ruiz. Will Smith is the catcher of this Dodgers team for the foreseeable future, and he's earned it. He is our, our cleanup hitter as a catcher. Uh, you know, you don't see that unless it's like Buster Posey. Yeah, haven't seen that since Mike Piazza, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, no, there's not enough you can say about Will Smith. And he, he already had my full faith and confidence when he hit that home run off of Will Smith last season in the NLCS. Um, just time and time again, he comes through in the clutch and at such a young age, barely, barely enough experience in, in major league baseball, but it, but it feels like he's been around, around the block a lot longer, just always coming through, always finding a way to come through. And what was huge in game four that I think a lot of people may have overlooked was the fact that he came up with that insurance two run home run yep. in the, in the eighth inning, basically telling Kenley Jansen, you got the rest of the night off because had he not done that, it would have been a three run lead. You've had to bring in Kenley and yes, there would have been an off day in between, but you don't know what would have happened in that inning. It could have been a stressful inning for Kenley. You don't know. And then it could have thrown off game five. So that was actually a huge insurance to run Homer in game four. And yeah, Kenley Jansen in, in the series, in the series, three innings, eight strikeouts, one hit. Yeah. <laughs> no walks. No walks, nothing. And the last three guys in the bullpen today, Trinan, Kenley, and Scherzer, three innings, no hits. Just the Turner error, six strikeouts. Yeah. And one of, the, one of the off-season narratives, when you, look, when you can read back on it, was Kenley Jansen said he was disappointed that he couldn't be on the mound to close out the 2020 World Series. And now here he is in 2021 proving to be that guy once not again closing out the final game <laughs> well another, that's, another tip. that's not the, the point is he faced the toughest part of the line yes yeah, he did yeah. so and another tidbit, that's a win to me another tidbit i absolutely love the guy who was on the mound to close out games two and four phil bickford who was drafted by the san francisco giants ahead of walker bueller <laughs> <laughs> that is a great point. How about that? Yep. That's How about that, Melot? How about them apples? <laughs> Karma came back to bite the Giants in the ass. Those lucky bitches got so many free rides throughout the season. And it's just great irony and karma 
that a controversial check swing is what's going to end their season. And I don't care what anyone says. The Dodgers beat them regardless. Yeah, my favorite part about that check swing was that it happened to Wilmer Flores. (laughs) Oh, yeah. By far. If I could have picked one guy for it to happen to, it's him. (laughs) can cry his way back home. Finally, Max Scherzer, as we know, closed it out. Definitely some hesitation whether he should have been that guy or not, but he proved why he was. And after the game, he was shirtless once again, loving the moment, (laughs) celebrating with his teammates. And to make his quote short, the best part of it is, I'm just here to win, Max Scherzer. I think he likes being a Dodger. That's just my assessment. I I think think he likes it pretty good. Yeah, I – I love the sh- I love the shots of him when he went down to the bullpen, just pacing, just like, yeah, yeah. just let me in. <laughs> just a psycho, man. Straight up psychopath. <laughs> God, I love is, it. This team is so entertaining. That's that's what I'll say. Yeah, maybe the first month or two was a little rough, and some people had skepticism whether this team would be for real. But when the moment gets tough, they come, they are able to gel together, and they fight pretty much any adversity. I mean, how many elimination games have they won in a row dating back to last year? You get three versus Atlanta, uh, the wild card game, and then two more. So that's at least six in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Definitely. Are. We've got a couple minutes left. So final thoughts before we close this one out. This was an incredible series. Uh, it just it, it it had everything really it really did have everything it had um uh, a lot of fantastic beautiful offensive moments from the dodgers it had absolutely tear your hair out moments from the dodgers it, it had great defense it had wind it had um pretty much anything you could ask for from the two best teams in baseball And I'm not going to say that the Dodgers now have like an easy ride towards a back-to-back title because it's going to get tough no matter what, Uh, whether it's the Braves, whether it's the Astros or Red Sox, if they beat the Braves, it's not going to be easy. But I truly think that this was their toughest task in the postseason. And to go through the Giants is just even sweeter. We said it at the beginning, we wanted the Giants because it, if the Dodgers win back-to-back titles, it's going to be that much sweeter knowing that they went through San Francisco. In San Francisco. It had wind. Jake yes. Reiner. <laughs> My final thoughts are this Dodgers team has fight. Uh, they went up against the best team in baseball. They didn't back down. They were down pretty much the whole series. Had to come back at Oracle win, and they did. And credit to every player on that team. They all, even the bench guys, Pujols, everybody. Everybody played a role. Um, but my final, my final, final thought is Dave Roberts had Gabe Kapler's ass in a briefcase that entire damn series. He managed his ass off. Every, even the games they lost was excellent. So Dave Roberts may actually be a genius. Like after all, after all these years, he may actually be a genius. He's so confident now he'll send those late night texts saying, Gabe, <laughs> guess what? I'm starting Seriously. to enable tomorrow. <laughs> Talk about a fuck you before bed. (laughs) It's just hilarious. Uh, My final thoughts, if I can get it in here, is just so good to see Gabe Kapler lose with those little glasses on. Yeah, whatever happened to that guy? He did he eat him? His little mini me? He he was there. He was there. He was there. All right. He disappeared in the end. I don't know what happened. Ted Lasso vibes to me with that little guy. Just going, I'm going down that road. But I love how David said earlier on the um, Twitter spaces, make sure to join us for those. We're going to start doing those. That Gabe Kapler just wears glasses to look smart, like Joe Madden S. 100%. So, yeah, that will conclude the NLDS recap show. I hope you guys enjoyed it like I did, David did, and Jake did. Although that was the most stressful series of my life. I'm not going to lie. But I would do it all again in a heartbeat, but maybe next year. It's also midnight. So hats off to us for doing this. (laughs) Yes. So help us.